Hey, it's Mike with Tech PB, and today we're going to talk about the Planet Eclipse SL94. Now, what's really funny about this gun is how much it pisses certain people off because of the price of it. You know, a lot of people refer to it as, oh, that's the $2,000 paintball gun. The thing you got to understand about paintball is this is a luxury sport, okay? Pure and simple, this is a luxury sport. It's not like basketball where all you need is just a $5 ball. It's not like, you know, soccer where all you need is a $5 soccer ball. And it's not like, you know, Frisbee where all you need is a $5 Frisbee, okay? This sport, unfortunately, can only be played by the people who can afford to play it, okay? And that's, that's the reality of paintball. The SL94 in this luxury sport called paintball is what you know is you know what I refer to as a luxury item DM9 that's a luxury item a Lux it's a luxury item SL94 luxury item you know Planet Eclipse Ego that's a luxury item it is a very expensive marker and the the target market for it are the people that can afford to pay for something like that you know I'd be like why are they coming out with a paintball gun every single year well because their target market demands it. Planet Eclipse customers like knowing that there's something new, something cool come out every single year and they save up the money and pay for it. So, you know, you can't get mad at people that want to drop $2,000 on a paintball gun or call them rich or whatever. These are people, you know, that, that not only are Planet Eclipse fans, but also are fans of the Ego, of the SL line, and they save their money throughout the whole year. And when the time comes to purchase one of these, they purchase it. With that said, this is the new SL94. Um, that we've been testing out for about the past almost two months now and the thing I like about this particular SL94 over any of the previous egos the problem I've always had were me personally I love Planet Eclipse okay I absolutely love Planet Eclipse what they do for the sport of paintball is unbelievable the amount of money that they give back in terms of sponsorships in terms of league sponsorships and stuff like that Planet Eclipse is indeed one of the pillars of the paintball industry I mean if you go to any event what do you see all over the place? Planet Eclipse, you know? I mean, the, the, you know, these people spend millions every single year reinvesting it back into paintball to, to you know, help the sport grow and to keep the sport alive. The, the SL94, one of my favorite things about this one is in the past for me, from somebody who's been shooting Intimidators, and where's my alias at? Well, here's, you know, here's one of my Intimidators. This is an alias. Um, one of the things that's always turned me off about the Planet Eclipse guns from somebody who's been shooting you know, Intimidators since like 2002 is how hard the bolt cycles back and forth. You know, I know that for a long time people were really, you know, hell-bent on speed. I want a gun that shoots 80 balls per second. I want a gun that if I just pour a case of paint in there, it's gone in a second. You know, people were really bent on speed. Sports kind of gotten away from that now with the new rule changes. You know, the rate of fires have dropped a little bit. And now, speed isn't really that important. Paintball players are starting to realize, well, you know, if I shoot 80 balls a second, not only am I wasting a lot of paint, but I'm gonna really hurt the person on the other side. So speed is really starting to take a back seat to performance in terms of how smooth the gun shoots. Planet Eclipse with their new line with the SL94, and also you will see it now with the Ego 10 and stuff like that, have actually taken some steps to slow the bolt speed down and make the gun instead of it hitting so hard going back and forth be a little bit of a smoother shot done it with the zip kit they've also done it now with what they call the throttle turrets inside there where basically they're just restricting the airflow a little bit of the bolt sliding back and forth um, which has made this gun shoot smoother and i know a lot of people say oh it's the newest model that's why it shoots smoother no they actually had this gun that we have here had the prototype throttle turrets in it to slow the bolt down and as a matter of fact the first time i took it out there and shoot it i took it out there and shot it first thing i realized i was like wait a second this doesn't shoot like my ego 9 stuff doesn't shoot like my ego 8 you know, this is a lot smoother and doesn't slam back and forth this hard. So I sent an email to Jack and he's like, yeah, actually that's got prototype throttle turrets in there. Put it up in the Players Club and now it's finally being public knowledge that they're going to take steps to slow the bolt down to make the gun shoot a lot smoother, which is good, you know, because for me, as I was shooting Egos, it felt like an alias with the LPR pressure cranked way up. You know, that like that, that, that bolt slamming back and forth so hard. Then when I would try to lower the LPR pressure, it would just turn it off. But the SL94, and you guys will see it now with the Ego 10, now the, the, they're going to be coming out with the new throttle turrets to slow the bolt speed down. It's going to make the gun shoot a lot smoother. 
With that said, let's go ahead and open up the SL94 box. Now, when you're dropping $1,800 on a paintball gun, you want everything that that company has, okay? Planet Eclipse does that. They don't hold anything back on here. You got a couple different accessories and a couple different options inside here. Let's go ahead and take the gun out. Obviously, the first thing you're gonna get is a barrel kit. Comes with a 685, 689, and a 693 bore. And you guys remember the, uh, the, six, uh, the 685 was actually the one that Jen was using to stir the chili in the uh, Planet Eclipse chili show. But I'll just put on there, just for the purposes of this video, the 689. So you get a nice, you know, a nice barrel kit. Obviously, Planet Eclipse is, is some of the best packaging that's in the industry. It comes with a nice, um, you know, a nice Allen key set. Comes with the Planet Eclipse uh, gun oil, which is the silicone-based gun oil, which works really well. Uh, you get a nice little Ego Spares uh, parts kit here with some extra screws. And in here, this is where you start getting into some goodies inside of there. And you also get a nice little barrel sock, which is really nice. And I hope some other companies take notice of this. You get the, uh, the, the feature supplement of the Planet Eclipse SL94 plus the manual. So it just goes through and really hits on all of the options that you come with that are above and beyond the Ego 9. Now, the thing that's kind of cool about it is they're going to give you everything that Planet Eclipse offers. It's got the Zik 2 kit in it. Also comes with two, uh, comes with two different valve bodies in that you can have the high pressure if you're an efficiency fanatic or you can have the low pressure if you're looking for a smoother shot. Another thing they give you is they actually give you two LPR caps and actually now that uh, Violent Products ProStar has actually now come out with an LPR tester, I'm curious to see what the preset or the fixed LPR cap actually sets the pressure at. Um, they just came out that product where you can screw it into the back. If you check ProStar Paintball or Violent Products, you'll see basically it's a, a fake ram that screws into the back of the gun, very similar to the Vice Ram, and it'll tell you what the pressure is of the, uh, of the low pressure regulator. So you get that and also, you get two different trigger styles, which is really nice. You get the, the S style trigger, uh, which is real familiar, you know, which uh, a lot of people really like. It feels really good for semi auto. And you also get the flat blade style, which most people tend to like a little bit better for PSP, just in the fact that it's just a little, you know, for some people, it's a little more comfortable when they're one finger in and they're ramping. You don't need. Uh, you just want some just a flat stick because trigger speed doesn't matter in ramping really really nice Now, you know, what are some of the complaints that I have on the gun? Obviously, I'm not rich enough to own one. This actually belongs to Jackwood um, Probably one of my biggest complaints. Now I'm gonna nitpick this just because of the price um, The clamping feed neck has a tendency to stay just slightly open when you put a loader in here not exactly sure why but the clamping feed neck, it doesn't snap completely shut. It stays open just a little bit. You try to push it shut, it doesn't do it. The only way to uh, really get it to work properly is you actually have to back it out, press it flush, and then tighten it back up again, then it stays flush. That's probably one of the biggest things. Also, you get the new Cure 3. Let's take a look back through here and I make sure I didn't miss anything that comes new on the gun. So I said you get the 689, 693, 685. You also get the 14 and the 16 inch barrels. Two different triggers. And I think I think that's about it obviously different milling so let's put this back in the bag and now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and we're gonna bring the camera in a little bit closer um, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to install the different triggers and also how easy it is to swap out the the LPR adjustment the uh, the LPR cone here and then we're gonna take apart the regulators take apart the RAM service it really quick come out and do an efficiency test okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start taking apart the SL now something that I didn't cover uh, originally is that the gun actually has red laser eyes which is kinda cool um, that was something that we didn't cover originally but I think I covered just about everything else the dual triggers the dual LPR caps dual valves uh, the Zik 2 kit the new Cure 3 bolt, let's take a look at that. A little more contoured, a little more shaped than the Cure 2. Uh, let's see what else. Um, also, it's got the new sprocket wheel adjuster, which is really nice. That way, uh, you don't need an Allen key to adjust it. You can just adjust it by hand. And I think that's about it. So here's what we'll do. Let's start taking apart the gun so we can show you what's inside here. 
There's a little red light lighting up again. And actually, you know, before I do that, let's go ahead and weigh it. Always an important part of the Tech BB show is weighing the guns. And hopefully you guys saw that there was a battery in there. And let's go ahead and weigh the gun. Oh, bounced around a little bit, but it looks like it found a spot. One pound, 13.2 ounces. One pound, 13.2 ounces for the Ego SL94. Let's go ahead and remove the barrel. And let's go ahead and remove the LPR cap. And I'll show you how easy it is to put the fixed LPR cap on there. Now, for years, no one, you know, you've never been able to see what your pressure is. I mean, if you're, if you're an Ego owner, I definitely recommend that you head over to ProStar and pick up the new LPR tester just so you know where your, you know, where your gun is running. And what we'll do here is we'll just go ahead and wipe this down a little bit. Now maintenance on the Ego is very simple. You know, they include their own oil and I definitely recommend you just use the oil. I mean, they know a little bit more than you do, so they recommend using the oil. So that's what I use anytime I maintenance, you know, do maintenance on an Ego is the Planet Eclipse gun oil. It works really, really well. And let's go ahead and put on the fixed low pressure reg, uh, low pressure reg cap. And so we just serviced the low pressure regulator and put on the low pressure red cap. Now you can see how, how much smaller the, uh, the fixed cap is compared to the adjustable cap. Uh, probably shaves about a half an inch off the front of the gun there. May make it a little more comfortable to grab. Let's go ahead and take apart the high pressure regulator. Now this just unscrews. Out comes the piston. Now something that you're going to notice now is with their new regulator design, they actually got away from the uh, they got away from the washers and they went to a spring. And something else that's kind of cool too is that the regulators now degas when you degas the gun, which is nice. You don't have to worry about your gun storing pressure. And when you go to take it apart, once you degas the gun, uh, the pressure bleeds out from the regulators as well. So you basically take apart your piston here, put a little bit of oil. Now, if you want to take this apart, you can. It's very simple. Now, in this case, you'll notice that this isn't sliding off. And the reason why the uh, collar here isn't sliding off is because of the, uh, the fitting here. The macro line fitting is screwed in too much and it's actually uh, touching or it's uh, uh, stopping the collar from sliding off. I'm not going to do this because it's not my gun, but all you have to do is if yours runs into that problem, unscrew the macro line fitting and this will slide right off. You can clean it all off, put it back together again, put a little blue Loctite, screw it back in and you're good to go. And let's go ahead and put the piston back in. And what we'll do is we'll just clean out the inside. Okay, get all the gook out of there. Slide this back in. and screw that back into the gun. Not a lot to it. And let's go ahead and tighten this all the way out through the top. And this, like I said, is a real low maintenance part of the gun. You really don't have to mess with this that often. But here's the velocity adjustment screw and you'll just basically wipe this down, put a little bit of oil on it, and push it back down into the gun Okay, now when you do this, you basically just want to make a mental note of pretty close to where the screw was at. So when you go in chrono, you should be pretty close to the same, uh, same velocity. Anytime you take apart your gun, you always want to go straight back to the chronograph and get your gun back to 300 feet per second. Now, let's go ahead and take apart the ram. Or as they say in England, the rammer. There's the ram cap and there's the ram and this is also very easy just wipe it down inspect the o-rings for uh, nicks or cuts 
Or another good telltale sign is when you go to clean it, if you see a lot of black, uh, that means that something's going on with your O-rings, it's dragging. Okay, put some uh, oil back on it, slide it back into place, a little bit of paint back here, so we'll clean this off. There we go. Okay, bolt is back in place, and now let's go ahead and we'll just have a little fun here, and we'll swap out the, the triggers. So say you want to go to the flat blade style and you don't want the S style, this is how you would swap out the triggers. It's real easy, once you unscrew the two grip frame screws, I'll be, I'll, you know, the biggest thing you got to worry about is pinched wires here. It's probably the most important thing anytime you ever drop your trigger frame out on an Ego is making sure you don't get pinched wires. There we go. Now let's get our Allen key set here. And you've got two screws holding your trigger in place. And now what we'll do is we'll find our other trigger assembly. This is the flat blade style. Wipe off the paint. Let's go ahead and drop that in. Now it's got magnets, so you gotta be careful because sometimes it'll try to grab the screws. There we go. Now we've got one more screw. That's it. To the classic style or the blade style trigger. Put that back down. There we go. And we've now switched it to the blade style trigger. And we'll put the barrel back on here and we'll take it out to the field and do an efficiency test. Hey, what's up fellas? We're about to do the efficiency test on the SL94. What we're going to do is we're going to take the camera off the tripod, do a tank temperature, shoot a couple over the chronograph, and then uh, we're going to start shooting until we run out of paint. So let's go ahead and pull this off. Now a lot of people had questions, why do you take a tank temperature reading? Oops, there we go. Um, take your finger off and push it again. Push it again. There you go. I don't know what's going on, I'll press it again. So about 115, I think the battery's going dead, that's okay. About 115 degrees, looks like we're sitting on the tank. And then hopefully you should be able to see that we are sitting at, let me get up one right there. Get off that glare. There we go. Looks like right at about 4100 psi, maybe just under 4200 psi. So now what we'll do is we'll set this up, turn our gun on, get our masks on, load up our first pod, and see where we're at. So let's go ahead and raise this a little bit. Let's see where we're at now. Let's go up a little bit more. There we go. All right. So we're sitting right at about, looks like right about 290. Yeah. It's getting a little hot out here. So we had to increase the velocity just a little bit. So, aim for targets to the right because I can't see where you're shooting right over your shoulder. There you go. All right, so we'll start shooting.
Thank you for that little piece of wood over there. There you go. we got? I think that's probably about all the shots we're gonna get, huh? Yeah. yeah. That's empty? Okay, sweet. So we got two, four, six, eight, ten pods. And that time we were using the Invert 2 loader. Now a lot of people are gonna wonder what this is. This is just the um, the Virtue Crown, the riser, just to make it a little easier to pour paint into it while we have the lid open. Thank you. It's all done with the efficiency test. So we'll wrap this up in a conclusion. You know, a lot of people are going to ask, well, you know, does buying an $1,800 gun make you a better player? No, absolutely not. But with that said, you know, is buying an $1,800 gun going to make you probably take paintball a little bit more seriously? Yeah, it's, it's almost like buying a $300 pair of running shoes. I'm pretty sure if you bought a $300 pair of running shoes, probably going to start doing a little bit more jogging than you used to in the past. You know, the people that buy the SL94, are not the everyday, day, you know, everyday rec ballers. They are serious paintball players that are looking into making a major investment in a paintball. You know, do I think that because somebody buys an SL94 they should be looked down upon or anything like that? Absolutely not. You know, absolutely not. Planet Eclipse can charge what they charge for these guns because there is a market for these guns. Um, I've really enjoyed shooting the SL94. I've never had the money to be able to afford one of these guns. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, when you really add up everything that it has here, when you consider that there are tons of other 12, 13, 14, 1500 dollars guns that are on the market, can they charge $1,800, $1,900 for this gun and sleep all at night? Absolutely. It comes with everything that one of the pillars of the paintball industry has to offer. They're putting everything in the box, which is what I really like. I actually searched their website to make sure that there was nothing else that they offered that wasn't in the box. Two different style triggers, two different style valves. Um, you know they've got the two different uh, two different style um, you know the the LPR what do they say I keep forgetting the LPR caps you know they got two different style of the LPR caps got the cure 3 bolt also has the zip kit uh, the zip 2 kit in it so they're putting everything that they offer into this and on top of that you also get the full barrel system with the 85 the 89 and the 93 plus the 14 and the 16 inch so you're getting everything that planet eclipse has to offer and and the gun you know these guns shoot flawlessly on the field you know a lot of people are like i'm sick and tired of seeing egos on the field why do you see so many egos on the field well if you really look at planet eclipse as a whole okay not just what's in the box but as a whole you know the fact that 
you know, they spend money out of their own pocket to go to all of the tournaments, that they sponsor many, many leagues and teams, that they sponsor a lot of professional players and stuff like that. That's what you're paying for. You know, that is what you're paying for on top of the quality milling, the packaging and stuff like that. So when you look at a Planet Eclipse gun, it's really hard to see if you just look gun for gun, there's a reason why a lot of people shoot egos on the field and you don't see a lot of Infinity Legends or something like that, okay? These guns perform very, very well out of the box and now I think with the new technology they're doing where they're slowing the bolt speeds down, making the gun shoot a little bit smoother, I think they're gonna be even harder to top. So, you know, that's what I've gotta say about the SL94. I really appreciate Planet Eclipse sending this out to me for us to do a review on it. Um, you know, the results of this gun were just, you know, you know, nothing short but impressive. The gun shot great, no problems with it. It's extremely light, sub two pounds. As you guys saw, it's less than two pounds up there with some of the lightest guns that are on the market right now. And, and you know, you know, if you've got $1,800 burning a hole in your pocket, you know, I think, you know, and you're really looking to make that first major investment in a paintball or looking just to treat yourself for once, pick one of these up. I think you're going to really like it. Thanks for tuning in.